Oh, I forgot to change the title. Whoops. Let's see. Uh, sleepy DP. Let's see. Uh, yeah, sleepy DP stream. Ah, uh, sleepy DP stream. There we go. How do you, Xavier? Good to see you. I believe your title is the same as last stream. Yeah, I guess so. To keep you here just in case. Good, good, good. Okay, so let's get started on our. Wait. Forgot. Okay, yeah, we can get here. I hope that thing about the unique grave that someone posted in the Discord is true, because that would be pretty cool. Oh, right, the Melina thing. Let's actually go there real quick, just to show it off. I did confirm that there was, in fact... Uh, where are you? Uh, my nerd church here. Yeah, I did confirm. The grave is there with the smoldering butterflies. I don't know if they're necessarily tell you that the grave belongs to Melina. It's possible. If we go with this association with Melo and the Smoldering Butterflies. It's a little weird that the Guardian is there, though. Because we also have a lone Guardian that just looks out to the tower here. So it might not be that significant. Actually, this is one of the few uh, guardians who doesn't have the red flowers. Mm -hmm. Um, the grave though itself is not unique. It's also used at the uh, as hence I was at Rea Lucaria. It's also used at Rea Lucaria. So yeah, it's not a unique grave model. In fact, uh, let me double check something real quick. Yeah, it's got the rounded back and everything. Yeah, so it's the same grave. I wonder if the, the characters and the butterflies are directly connected, or if they are simply attuned to the same element or something. I think it's just a reference. I think there's just the fact that there are these butterflies out here, and for one reason or another, the developers decided they were going to have them uh, reference the fates or natures of uh, Melania, Melina, and uh, Mikola. Don't know why. That's the thing. Alright, let's look at our, our map now. Very important when you do this chat. In fact, I'm going to put this... Ah. There really is no better way to do this, huh? Okay, I think this is the best way to put the, the stream and all that, so that way. Uh... I hate it. I hate it. Alright, so. What are we looking at? A lot, actually. Both of these. 
these trees are dead, huh? That's the point of the map. Now farmers will, uh... So the bridge tells us water was definitely here. We don't know how wide it is, so it could be something like this. We also know that this area has to be more or less open because there's all this stuff sticking out. In fact, you know what? Let's double check how it looks. looking from here than from the map, but I guess it tells you just how big those stupid things are. Yeah. So this we would have to accept as being exposed above ground. Okay. So looking at it, say something like this, maybe? And then the water. Maybe something like this. So you have Far Missoula here, Far Missoula up here, right? So Divine Tower gets left behind, uh, this Divine Tower gets left behind, these bridges and things get left behind. But, like, everything that was struck around here ish, I guess, will be taken. Now, it doesn't really make sense why this land is all okay, I suppose, because it's still like a huge part of it. This would make sense, though, with the impact crater. We also need a connection. I guess Godfrey could take the mountaintops over to Far Missoula, if need be. So I guess it doesn't have to be directly connected to the Erd Tree stuff. Yeah. Could have it something like this. Now I don't think I get the gameplay. We can get a really good idea of how this would lay out. Let's try. that are inaccurate, even though they did fix some things in the other updates. For instance, there's a small pond in Al Altus that doesn't show up on the map. Oh, really? I didn't realize there was a pond there. I must have been really small, because I don't remember it. But yeah, the maps, especially when you get to the edges of this stuff, like, the edges give you this idea that there's this really broad decline Whereas in game it's pretty sharp. It's like you get here and then it's like okay, like the the water level is like here. It's not all the way over here or something like that. Same with the stuff here, right? It gives you the idea that there's all this rock between these little uh, flying buttresses, 
and the water, it's not really. It's closer to like here, maybe, and that's being generous. But anyway. Now because there's so many pieces of Farm Missoula at varying levels, it's hard to get a full grasp on the layout of this place, but it's one thing is obvious. The area included both above ground and underground sections. Not everything was above ground. Like it was probably this stuff here was probably underground. This stuff here was almost certainly underground, right? Um, oh, cool. Prisoner. Sinner. You have the temple here, which is probably above ground. You have this part of the city, which is above ground. Again, you have these underground temple structures. Dragon Temple, there's Dragon Temple Altar. So you essentially have this entire city with a temple under beneath it. Now it's possible some parts of this underground temple were exposed because of the river and stuff. That's, that's the part that's a little bit of a mystery. Man, wouldn't it be great if the DLC showed us Far Missoula before it crumbled? That's right, the other temple. Uh, that's another temple. Ah, this is just all temples and temples. Yeah, one of my pictures that shows the see-through uh, butterflies is of that pond. The pond is a bunch of those walking corpses that grow from it. Oh, I'm going to have to go check that out. Uh, where exactly on the map, uh, Xavier, would this be? Like, can you tell me, like, do I look, like, west of a certain location or something? Just give me one of those. Alright, so this is the building we're at, right? So the Dragon Temple lift. This lift takes us underground. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So you have this top structure. But it takes you underground, and the temple is mostly underground. Gonna take this screenshot for future reference. Okay, yeah, so it looks like pretty much all of this temple structure was underground, right? We see all this. This is all definitely underground, especially with these dragons here. It's left of Dominula, if I recall correctly. Gotcha. And we don't know where this bridge actually connected to. There's a temple thing there, though, so it's probably very high up. Like this would have had to be one of those above ground structures that was pretty high up and now it's been brought low. is investigating that dog barking. You do that, my man. Just don't go after me. There are a lot of signs, though, that there were rivers flowing underneath this bridge, though. It 
does get the sense though that there was a very almost like a mountainous hill type area. Uh, we were there at one point. Uh, though I can't remember how that connected. Morning, hey Iman. Let's see. Let's see. So all this had to be above ground. And this is all connected as well. This is why we have sorcery chat. This part's not necessarily. Yes, 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 I'm aware. Cool, you can go inside that bridge. I think that's something that we can do when we explore this area. Oh. That's cool. That so it doesn't imply that this bridge did So it doesn't really lead it very right? well. That's kind of a video game. Basically, right next to where this one is. Kind of weird. Oh, these are the same bridges I think we see when we first arrived, so that might explain it. They do similar things with those guys. Yeah, I know. I don't care about you, though. Yes, this is on way that I got to. Winding dragon. Winding dragons everywhere. That Dragon Barrel map is still on the broadcast screen, by the way. Yes, that is the intention, Night Scout. So, yeah, so we're going to keep that there. Yeah, something roughly like this, perhaps. And, 
the impact crater for this area. It'll be something like this, I suppose. Uh, look here. Our bridges. Looking at this. Now, Godfrey's path seems to more or less trace along the re regular highway, which isn't necessarily a problem, though it is curious considering how undefended the side areas of Celia are. Makes you wonder if Grey Roll and company were, like, squatting here at the time. Uh, we know Exikes is, like, here, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Evergale here. I guess Godfrey and company could have gone through here somehow or other. Just they have to find a way to scale down, but scaling down is easier than scaling up, so it's at least feasible. somewhere west of Dominula. I assume you mean this Dominula, not, you know, all the windmill stuff. Let us see. Yeah, we got that. Yeah, if I remember right, yeah. It's about, cr it comes out crooked, right? So you can definitely see where this kind of more or less lines up with where this is. And then... Let's see. Man, this must be a really small pond you're talking about, Xavier, because I really... I'm going to keep going further west. Alright, so we got you all. You ladies dancing on the corpses. They rise. Yeah, they are. Some more of these uh, rotting corpses in water. Some butterflies here. Alright, can I go back to my map? Please. Yeah, lots of these uh, butterflies, yeah. So there's a huge correlation water and these butterflies showing up in the area, but not always. That's the weird part. Sometimes they'll just be there, and it's hard to tell what exactly the motive is for putting them there. I guess it could just be that they migrate around or something, right? So we just put the odd butterfly away from the water and then just put the high concentrations there. That might be the idea. guys over there still? Well, that's your problem. 
I don't need my map back, thank you. And no, no. There we go. Yeah, so it doesn't really show the pond here. Giant club. Oh. Nothing against that pat windmill in particular, my man. Oh, you know what? He's facing the direction of the hailing tree. Ah, that makes sense. Ah. No, you got it, gotcha. Thank you, I'm glad I got it. God, having this gimp in the way of chat, though, truly is an eyesore. Oh, the great waterfall crash, you're facing more or less correlates with where Godwin is corrupting, right? The big question is, where are these roots? Let's start with Dark Lord. Awesome hell itself. Oh. God, uh, Dragon Barrow slash Northern Caleb, where you got tons of gold stone showing up, which correlates to again Farm Missoula being right here. Truly. I'm an artist, by the way. There we go. Eh. I've already blocked a little bit of this, but let's be kind. Okay, so we got gold stone and stuff, so it fits in there. And then we have to factor in Bodrum Palace. Nocron and stuff, where all these ancient dynasty ruins are. Chief ruins. Oh. More or less our area would be about here. Uh, where's the other well? Uh, where's the Colosseum here? Yeah. The other well's about here-ish, right?
wide area here. Always can add more gold, old, more gold, more gold, whatever. Uh, and then the fella. Grand Cloister would go, Grand Cloister goes to Nerdia. Quickly, the bottom of the academy. I'll basically do everything around this bridge like this. the well here, so we'll do the whole Something like this, basically. Whatever, it's all ugly. Ain't gonna be winning any awards for this anytime soon. I guess for comparison. This is self-evident because it's all in all fits anyway, but right. now the Nocron Moglin Palace area, I can kind of see why the gold settles there. That I understand. The Noxtella Grand Cloister stuff. That is obvious. Why that gold is, is cropping up there. Because again, so we have Northern Caleb, which makes sense because it borders Farmazula. So gold in Farmazula, which we also find there. So we find both glass and gold in Farum and bordering areas. We then got gold down south and out west. 
maybe brought along the rivers after the ear tree shows up. But that would be interesting because it would tell us that as the ear tree is growing, not only is it a quote unquote affecting the water supply, at least in minor ways, that allow gold smithing stones to start showing up in these specific areas. The thing is, we also know ear tree roots grow here from Grand Cloister and stuff specifically, so. Ah, uh, but other areas with ear tree roots don't automatically have goldstone. Glass? Uh, glass is what I talk about when I'm talking about the... What's it called? The mountaintops. Uh, the mountaintop smithing stone. Actually, I have to double check where the mountaintop smithing stone can be found. See if maybe there's patterns there we can also use. Uh... Uh, with how floating Far Missoula is, so east of the lands between, I wonder if a lot of the city was once east of the Wall of Dooms and the ground being pulled up caused the desertification. Basically, not all of it may have been at the bay that pours down the waterfall. I doubt that. Because, let's be because let's be honest, if we're talking about all stuff getting pulled up, why are then we talking about two areas that are so w w widely separated that are being pulled up by this gravity? Like, again, I already pointed out how, like, okay... Garonk's little temple thing managed to stay down. Okay, fine. But everything else at least is within the area, so you can at least believe that it's all being dragged up together. It's a little hard to justify when you have like an entire desert on the other side of a landmass that doesn't get touched whatsoever. I caught up on your prior videos, left some comments on them in post. Okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, I found it. Da, da, da. Like I said, the map apparently was even more inaccurate before. Like, I recall when I first played, there was this land bridge that connected with Jarberg on the map that was actually there. Yeah, I remember that, too. They removed that real quick, huh? Took them, like, two or three patches, but they were like, okay, we gotta get rid of it. Glass? Yeah, I mentioned that. Ah, uh, does one of the Eternal Cities have two chests? With somber mountaintop smithing stones? Does it? I don't know. We're gonna have to go check out the details on that now. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know why. I'm not exactly sure why the the ancient dynasties well I get why they might follow so ancient dynasties are either establishing themselves along the rivers assuming the rivers were there first or or along quote unquote ley lines with gold but it's not obvious why those lines exist uh, something I want to check real quick uh, Nocturne doesn't have what we see with I don't think Nocron has what we see with the Grand Cloister, right? I don't think there's any Erd Tree uh, leaves or anything like that that we should be mindful of. Yes, yes, Mr. Cowman. So, Formic Rock, telling us that the ants are here. Again, goes back to the point of the ants climbing all the way up to get to the source of the Angel River and stuff, but they can be found in multiple locations. We might even have our... We might not... We might even have our ancient uh, dynasty descendants with the ancestral followers to thank for keeping it all... Keeping it all clear of ants. Of your old culture. Yeah, I'm not seeing any earth tree flowers though.
grab, right? Normal grab. Yeah, guys, look at that. They totally sank. I, too, have buildings designed to hang from ceilings when my civilization sinks from the open sky. That's logical. carry down the aqueduct all the way from the nameless eternal city <laughs> right didn't even think about that carry down the river that makes Oh, this is full screen. This is not intentional. I gotta remember to make it so you guys can actually see stuff. We see just map, nothing else. Sorry there, Ryman. That was not intentional. Map, yes. Full map, no. In the wiki it says, one is found in a chest at the back room, protected by silver tears. One is found in a building with an open window containing a chest. The somber polar smithing stones in Noxtella. Could be result of trade between Lyurnia and the Nox, because Lyurnia has roots in the mountaintops. Could also tie to Ordia. Ugh. connection bits here connecting these two areas at the very least if far missoula did have a river passing straight through it it wouldn't be unprecedented with what we see here with the weeping peninsula This is another curious one because there's an ancient civilization ruins underground here. And the problem is it's hard to tell how much these ruins are are just leftovers of perhaps something which was much more prevalent on the continent. Alright, so if the possibility is true that the ancient dynasty was established after Plaky's god dies, and the herb tree starts growing roots at least and stuff. Then we can see the ancient dynasty establishing stuff. The ancient civilization as well. That might push back the sun capital, though, and Farmazula's move into the area a bit further down in the timeline. At the very least, it's harder to justify the sun capital coexisting with the ancient civilization when the ancient civilization has its golems and stuff around. It's also possible... It's also possible that the ancient civilization made that bridge, or at the least started on the bridge. Let's double check that bridge one last time. Uh, 
Ah, wait. Almost forgot. Let's check that bridge one more time. Where is it? Over here. Okay. Okay. So that is Langdale architecture. The tiling is Langdale Erdtree cross tiling. The statues go back quite ancient, but they've been reused by so many other civilizations. That's almost pointless to point that out. <laughs> Sunflower, what a shocker. Something similar here. Most similar to this stuff. You have the pointed arches here. Also, I kind of just suddenly stopped seeing pointed arches by that point for some reason. Yes. Yeah, there's definitely some similarities. I want to have America's room. You mean the Elden Ring, hi man? Also, apparently I never pay attention to the Sword Seals. Call, call uh, America's and Radigan's rooms Elden rooms, not great rooms. Huh. I've not looked at that. I have not looked at that at all. I cannot see. Uh, let's try to get to uh, daytime, can we? Is it always raining here? Is 
they're afflicted in Japanese, I can check in a moment, but let me focus on what I'm looking at now. That's funny. Alrighty. So I think only the Divine Bridges have the pointed stuff, and I guess the other ones are just going to be rounded at the bottom. There we go. In case I forget those ring designs. Misty Bridge, yeah. Man, that bridge is up high, huh? Uh, That's a point. So thinking chat. It's possible that this aspect of these bridges are actually very old, but say stuff like this top portions and these railings are actually new additions. Renovations you might say in that the old bridges were like broken, run down, they need repairs. And those were the repairs. Probably the banished knights and such. In fact, before this bridge was changed. I guess this bridge was being used for some water villages and stuff. Hey, Platty. There's a big squiggle map over the game. That is the intention. Think of our big squiggle map. See where High Road Cave takes us, shall we? I 
been AFK for a while. Gotta uh, step out. Have a nice night. You too, Night Scale. Be safe. Uh... Good. At least I'll be able to sleep after this, Joe. If I recall correctly, we go over and into the water. Yeah, we're already. Ah. Wasn't it TA that was talking about how, like, tectonic shifts or stuff brought this stuff underground? I don't know if I fully buy that. At the very least, this area would probably make the strongest case for it. Oh, we'll see. So we're still under the Divine Towers where the bridges are, so we're about here, Jeff. I think he was saying something like he was holding up the ground like they built the Earth or something, though I could be misremembering. Yeah, I'm starting to recall that now. Yeah, something like the entire Earth or whatever shifted and that this stuff like was a support for something like that. I've said it before, it looks like it was just supports for actual highway structures that would uh, get you around, and I pointed it before, right, so this stuff obviously bridges the, the peninsula to the mainland grave area, and then you would have one highway that went all the way around, cuts through the beach, past Tower of Return, and heads straight for Morn, because for some reason, there was something at Morn that the ancient civilization built, hence why there was still a giant golem there, that other people have repurposed. I can't believe I didn't die. Well. Well. That's death. Sure, Stake of America. How much worse could it possibly be? I wrote. Now what's interesting about these is that these are familiar designs, but they're not black uh, stone like we see above ground. Which makes you have to wonder, are they black because it was natural, or are they only black because there was some catastrophic event that turned them black? 
kind of like a Black Knight first flame deal. Hey, I am. Now keep in mind though, ancient civilization stuff, so we typically associate it with these, this design of like pillars and things. Oh, they got the same little arch uh, here, that's interesting. Maybe we can use that to tie the ancient civilization and those bridges. We can also use this. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that. Something like this. Should I ask about the Japanese translation of the Elden Rune thing on the Scar Slice Source Sealed in the Discord since you're busy doing decent stuff on the stream? <laughs> decent stuff? Different stuff on the stream. Uh, no, uh, Xavier, I'll check it out. Like I said, I just want to focus on this stuff. Like I said, today is a mapping thing. Sure, go crazy. Oh, that's death. Alright, I'm gonna go check out that sport field thing while we're here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Once we're done here, my head's gonna collapse on the pillow. Uh, talismans. Elden Rome. Four references for the various things, okay. Uh, yep. Erdeno Rune. That is most certainly what it says. Why dying a lot? Because I am, I am tired. I am not using enough brain power to keep myself alive. Again, always find the wa the wa with the water it comes the silver. Bloodborne all over again. Now again. Now I think we can all agree that this architectural style is very different from this architectural style, and yet we consistently see them depicted together. So we can at least say that same civilization. These are also at the ruins preface, uh, little precipice. By the by. So, so they have a special term for their runes. Interesting. Yes, it is. This kind of makes you wonder what an elder rune is versus a great rune. I guess it's a rune as a god, maybe? Hey, we're gods, so we have special runes uh, representing us as gods, maybe? Becoming Vessel of the Elden Ring? Best I can imagine. There's still some cosmological questions there, but... Hmm. Uh, it's 
they more or less stayed pretty consistently in this area. This area is more about going down, down, down. <laughs> also makes these lights coming in from these random holes to the uh, sun <laughs> incredibly unbelievable. At the very least, it opens the possibility that these bridges were built by the ancient civilization. Like I said, I think the structure of these archways and stuff, all the statues and the Erd Tree reliefs, those I think came later. Those I think were all came later. Water needed a bridge. One that's completely isolated, possibly because of Barmazula moving. One that, again, isolated, needed a bridge. This is kind of just the last, at least. All right. The uh, boss here drops the blue dancer charm, right? Yes. Yeah, so the we acquire the blue dancer charm here, which is interesting. Because again, recall ancient dynasties, ancient civilization, they coexist. So it does give us the idea that the blue, uh, that the blue, uh, the blue swordsman may have come from the ancient civilization. Alright. Loki, get some sleep, lol. No. Sleep? That's a funny way to say stream, I am. Alright. Here. Here. I think somewhere around here. Here. Oh. And light here. So I don't think there's any in peninsula. And I don't think there's any in Lyurnia. So correct me if I'm wrong, chat. I think those are all the saint statues that we see and can break open to grab Smithy Stone. Right? It's a little bonus reward. Just to showcase what I'm talking about. Let's go to Limgrave. Doesn't the armor associate with him talk about being nomadic? Yes. There are um, nomads who try to quote unquote flow like the swordsman, but we don't know if that's because they're trying to just emulate the swordsman and his story, or if it's because they like the tribe existed and the swordsman came from the tribe. So again, just talking about the fact that there's a charm in an ancient civilization ruin related to someone who was mainly known for going to the ancient dynasty to fix their rock god problem. Seems to suggest to us that there's possibly an ancient civilization connection with that man's background. Again, I believe 
supposed to be the same person who trained Melania? So these statues we can break open. Let's see. Oh, line there. Well, that sucks. Not the city in Ultis either, or Volcano Manor, so that's good. All right. So my general conception of things is that we have Far Missoula, we have what I'll call the Saint Civ, then we have Ancient Civilization and Ancient Dynasty, we have the Far Missoula Colonies, we have, uh, Mer we have obviously um, the Stargazers and later of course the Lyurnian, so we'll call them the Lascar, after the ruins there. Parians eventually join in with them. We have a bunch of pagan stuff to the south on Gelmir, things like that. I'm not going to focus on those. At some point in all this, the Nox get underground. The giants move from Kayla to the mountaintops. Erd Tree Kingdom, of course, shows up. That's about it, I think. Can't even need their major sieves to be keeping track of. So you have the idea that this ancient civ civilization by a divine tower by a divine tower by a divine tower. Oh. Ah, so what's the deal with these glowing statues? They're glowing because they got smithing stone inside them that we want to get up into. That's it. They're not, like, intrinsically glowing. It's just that it's the item light thing that all items have. No, no, uh, towers around here, really. Kind of isolated, kind of isolated. Though it does place them on the mountaintops, which could be significant. None near these tower here. Obviously, we don't know if there's any that were near this tower. No, I'm going to assume no, because Farmazula. So I'm not seeing any evidence that they cared about any of this region. Do they have any lore relevance? Yes, they have lore relevance. I am as I'm discussing now. Because this quote unquote saint civilization I'm talking about may well be the creators of these divine towers. Which would be incredibly significant if we're trying to discuss that. the towers, right? So TA, when he was discussing the idea of the towers, his basic general theory was you have these sort of like Stonehenge akin civilization that are incredibly ancient. They build these monolithic stone structures that are connected to a meteor worship of a kind. The fact that we have the fact that we have these towers in a general uh, in a general what's the word? Not location, but layout where they form this sort of hexagon that would cross around, like, here. Gives us room for pause, where... There. there. So, using that as our basis, we can say that this is probably the center of the meteor strike, more or less, right? 
Now, as I talked about before, there seems to be this idea that Farmazula was established based on land that was here, which we have represented... Why are you all red? Yeah, go away. Stop being red. Who said you can be red? Right? So I have something like this, right? So this would be the impact point. Right? So this would be impact point. Farmazula's land would be about here. Now there might be a small problem here. Because it's possible there's a lot less land, so maybe the land cutoff was like here. Possible. Because we have to keep in mind, Farmazula is not that big in terms of land mass here. So it's quite possible that we had a lot, um, it's a lot less land than what we're showing here. I have to find the exact locations of all the gold smithing stones in Kaelid and see if there's any like patterns on where they cut off from as far as going west is concerned. A ring of circles. Yep. Uh, I mean, some of the larger spinning stones are pretty as glowing, but yeah, I just assume it's draw your attention. Yeah, again, it's just the item thing, Xavier. Because again, we have to keep in mind, it's glowing even for like the most basic of smithing stone inside. And like I said, it's always got the glowing item effect there. And it's just like, you could see it more obviously because it's, you know, encased in like regular stone stuff. But then once it's broken open, you see that it's just that item effect. So yeah, there's nothing special going on there. Uh, and there a ring and a ring and a ring or something was uh, another thing he said. Oh, right, because he was trying to make a connection to the, uh, to the eye, right? Again, we're seeing that pointed structure and similar reliefs. Now, this could just be a case of reusing assets, and they retextured them, so that way you wouldn't associate them, necessarily. But I don't know. It's making me suspicious, chat. Now, this stuff's the same as what we see in the sealed tunnel. Obviously, now there's two fingers here. Yeah, okay, so this stuff. So, TA puts a lot of uh, stock in the circular structures here that are surrounding the meteorite here and trying to make a connection to the fell god. I'll be honest, I think it's a stretch. This is one of those things where you you really look into it when it's like, it can, you, the alternate explanation is it's just shapes. It's just like, oh, we need a fancy design to th throw around these meteorites. Okay, I'll do like these weird little things here with like the lines and like a ring type deal. And then I'll do a bunch of these circle things here that'll be like these big um, depressions. Oh wow, there were birds on there. Sorry. See, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not buying it. That, also, a huge problem with the idea that the giants made these is why did they make human-sized doorways and elevators and shit for us to go through? It seems kind of counterintuitive, especially with like TA going so far to be like, oh, you see, there was this different type of super mega giant that are these big corpses here. And I've said, you might, I've put my take before. I think it's just artistic license. I think it's just the developers being like, ooh, we want to have big giant corpses here. We'll make them really big to really kind of showcase how cool and give you the feel of massive giants. Similar to how they, uh, Similar to how they apply artistic license to, uh, what's it called? The... Ah, it'll come to me eventually. Huh? Am I crazy, chat? No, no, okay, no, those are correct. It is kind of a bit weird how you have this super wide bridge area and then it gets thinner. We don't really see that with the eye, I don't think. Yeah, this one stays thin. So does this one. Uh, maybe not. Maybe here it's bigger. Now, he does bring up the idea of possibly a catastrophic meteor event, which caused these towers to get covered in the rock formation, which apparently resembles 
uh, dried. I have to I have to check the details there. I could definitely believe that. That was definitely a question in the back of my mind. Did that explanation sound satisfactory? Yeah. Yeah, we see how they're covered in like these rock formations and stuff. When I first saw Far Missoula, I assumed that it was a small portion of the city that was forced into a crumbled ring shape around the tornado. Yeah, that would make sense, right? We know for sure that the main tornado in the center is clearly, like, the eye of the storm, as it were. And everything else seems to more or less have been sucked up and sort of wrapped around it, right? Because you have to think about it. It's like a giant tornado. So the tornado is causing everything to kind of start swirling around and be trapped in the tornado. Now, we know there's other smaller tornadoes kind of on the edges and stuff and around. Again, the idea that there is a water source, so the idea of water flowing through Far Missoula isn't far-fetched. Yeah. So we have... So we have a really advanced civilization that builds... Um, primitive, but very advanced. Those would be called satellite tornadoes. Thank you for the terminology. God, that jank axe has a hexagon. You know, I'm thinking, chat. Maybe something almost like this. Because one consistent factor with all of these towers is they always stay facing the water to some extent, right? They're always close to the water of whatever direction they're quote-unquote facing for the central mean. So we might be able to use that to help us eliminate... And we know some landmass can be in between on these lines. It doesn't have to be like you can't have any land between those, but the actual towers themselves. This map is funny. Yeah, it's uh it's quite the quite the artistic experience, I'm sure. Actually, which way do the tornadoes spin? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Let's check. Clown or clockwise? That looks clockwise to me. That looks to be the direction of the clock last time I checked. We are central tornado here. I assume the other trying to just spin the same way. I'm not sure, but let's take a look.
Yeah, it looks like they're all facing... Wait. Is that one? Clockwise. That one? Yeah, it looks like they're all going clockwise. None seem to be going counter. So in the real world, that would mean that we're in the southern hemisphere. So yeah, there might be less landmass than we would think for Far Missoula. Like, it could be something like this here. Could be something like this. And all that was far as we will land. Uh, yeah. Either way, it doesn't leave much space for the giants to be going to uh, mountaintops from Kaled without Far Missoula's blessing. Which means that Far Missoula basically gave the okay to driving out the frost dragons. Ancient civilization could have possibly built the bridges. That's possible. The divine towers are definitely older, though. Far Missoula doesn't seem that big. Yeah, it doesn't. The problem is we don't know how much of that land has been lost. We also have an idea about how much the scope has to be. So, for example these here. We also know there's more pieces of Farmazula that have been crumbling and dropping all across the lands between. So again, it, it, it's super hard to tell. Because it could be like you could have like 60% of Farmazula's land mass is not here. It's somewhere scattered across the ocean and the lands between. That's a lot of missing city. At the very least, it has to cover this here. Has to cover some degree of all this. It might go as far as here, where this uh, Coliseum is. Because we have to keep in mind, chat, before this Coliseum is built, and keep in mind, Farmazula is probably already in the sky by the time Godfrey's down here building Coliseums. So it's quite possible all of this was the edges of Far Missoula's land. It also explain why there's a connection to a well here. Though, one problem we have in either case with this Colosseum is how people in Godfrey's era were expected to get there normally besides through the, the Knox Well. So it's like, ah, oh, go, through, go through Kenneth Heights territory and then travel along the entire Shifa River. Just so you can go visit the gladiatorial arena. Sort of defeats the point of having having a Kaled arena. So again, it might just be artistic license there. We have a bunch of pieces spread across the land, so I assume it's just a portion of the city. Yeah, it seems to just be key portions or central portions of the city that aren't as easy to to strip off, right? But we know that a lot of pieces of, like, the curved uh, mausoleum sections have been taken. Oh, they give us random blocks and stuff. Again, and we don't know how much of that is the earth and land mass that's been dropping around, so... It's... It's hard to determine. Yeah, 
working backwards in the timeline is not simple when we're dealing with civilizations this old. Uh, which versions are these? I assume these are round. So let's go look at the ancient Civ ruins here. Uh, these have the pointed arches. Good deal. <laughs> Loki, the drip. Stop with the drip biome. I have perfect drip. I'm the drippiest of drip. Ignore the frozen icicles forming off my drip. Okay. Uh, I can't really think about big picture stuff that well, so I can't really attempt to help with the timeline stuff. It's the same reason I don't like large scale real time strategies. <laughs> it's it's fine. It's uh it's not easy, I think, for anybody. If it was that easy, I think more historians would know what went on with a lot of the ancient, most ancient civilizations in human history. Honestly, isn't human history kind of redundant because humans are the only ones actually, you know, doing history? Technically, everything else is prehistory. I think that's gonna be all for today, chat. I'm tired. I want to sleep. I think I've covered about everything I want to try to cover. Unfortunately, no breakthroughs on the ancient dynasties locations. Why they chose those locations? That part is still a mystery. So that sucks. I think we are inching closer to understanding, though, the stuff with this, as I'm calling it, the Saint Civ. So it seems like there was the Saint Civ, and then it fell to ruin, and then yet, ha and again, we're talking strictly about human civilizations. Then you have ancient Civ and uh, ancient dynasties. So you have ancient dynasties underground, ancient civilization above ground. At least the ancient Civ seems to have adopted the Saint Civ's um, iconography of the Saint statues. I don't know if it went any farther than that. The ancient Civ may also be responsible for the bridges to the towers. Hey, Lou Reed. Yeah, sorry. I don't know if you've been here the whole time, Lou, but... Sorry to be cutting this stuff short, but I'm just... I'm tired. And then... The question then becomes, when did the ancient Civ and the ancient dynasty fall? Because then the Nox have to move in and build atop the ancient dynasty ruins. And you also have... I'm considering the possibility of the ancient dynasties 
being destroyed by the Nox, but I don't know how viable that is as a theory. I'm going to have to explore that idea more. Anyway, and then you have... You have the ancient Civ also collapsing, which is so hard to imagine why. And you have a bunch of barbarians everywhere. Now, it's possible it could just be like a great systems collapse and everyone descend into barbarism after that, and that's why the barbarians are everywhere. So it's like you have Saint Civ collapses, barbarian culture, ancient Civ collapses, barbarian culture, and so on. But then eventually the farmers will let colonists get in. This, of course, starts begging the question then of... Is F.A. actually the first civil... It, it seems like it's the first civilization, especially with how advanced some of its cultural elements are. <sighs> okay, it's a lot to think about, but we're going to end this here, chat. Thank you so much. Good night.